Well, would you look at what we have here? 2021 Ram 3500 HD. It's here because of a bunch of anomalies in the dash. He says the radio display goes dead, the heater controls go dead, the power window switches stop working on both sides of the front, and it's intermittent. Now it's been fairly mild and somewhat snowy, so that could have come, uh, account for moisture getting into a network wiring or something. So I have uh, limited access because my Snap-on software is expired, so I don't have access through the secure gateway. So we're going to see what we can read for code in this thing. So I've done a network scan as much as I can without access through the secure gateway and I've got some communication codes in the active noise cancellation system ugly codes interior uh, can interior bus off performance lost communication with passenger door module lost communication with left front door module in the blind spot sensor lost communication with body lost communication with ECM PCM Lost communication with the right front door module, left blind spot sensor, interior CAN bus off. So it's looking like we got a network issue here. CAN interior bus stored, and body VCM. Lost communication with the radio, HVAC. So there's something going on with the interior CAN bus. Central vision processing module. Lost communication with radio, lost communication with passenger door, BCM, HVAC. Wow. And we've got a record of all these codes. I'm wondering if I can actually clear them. And then we're going to do some uh, investigating about where, what modules are sharing that interior CAN bus and see if there's anything common like on a Ford pickup truck where the blind spot detection module which are the rear tail lights get moisture inside them and short out the CAN bus but there's tons of codes in here and all related to interior CAN bus okay So notice it says limited. Uh, some vehicle manufacturer secure diagnostic requests may not be available. So we're going to try clear all codes. Key on engine off. I've got the key in the, well, the ignition ready button. Yeah, so I can't clear codes without a secure gateway. So I'm going to fire up my think tool and see if it's registered. I do have a... Uh, subscription but my snap-on scan tool has not been updated so it's not allowing me to use it so I fired up my uh, sync tool and uh, I'm still having some drama logging into the Fiat Chrysler uh, secure gateway but we can read codes again and I'm going to scan it with uh, doing a network scan I got a clean battery charger on it and see what modules respond and what modules don't respond. Some of these may not be equipped. Hmm. Vehicle system interface module. Telematic box module. Trailer tire pressure monitor, I'm sure it doesn't have that. Electronic shifter module doesn't have that. It's got a column shift. Active vibration cancellation. Now the Snap-on scanner read codes or had loss of communication with that HVAC module. Has that. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do um, searches on uh, Identifix to see if there's anything common again. Well, this is not very impressive. 
ID'd the vehicle on Identifix and we have no wiring diagrams, no motor wiring diagrams, no color wiring diagrams, nothing. Thanks Identifix. This is a 21. It's two years, three years old. It should be here. So I did a keyword search for CAN interior bus and HVAC module problems and loss of communication and then no case histories, thanks. But I found, did find the description and operation of the ECM, electrical uh, communication network. There are actually three CAN bus networks. There's CAN C, chassis, interior CAN, which is the one that has the problem and CAN electrified powertrain. Yeah, and LIN bus of course. So it doesn't tell me what modules are sharing the interior CAN bus and I was looking for a wiring diagram so I'm gonna ID this as a 21 and hope it's the same, I'm sorry, as a, a 2020 and see if the information is there. because we don't even know where to measure terminating resistance. I know the CAN C is at 6 and 14, but that's not this network in question here. So I'm assuming this 19 is similar or the same. That interior high-speed CAN does not terminate at the diagnostic connector here. The only thing that comes to that diagnostic connector is CAN C. Uh, looking at the schematics here, there's a lot of stuff on that interior high speed. Some of these things that the vehicle won't have, but for sure the driver's door module, passenger door module, left tail light. Now I'm not sure if this has got blind spot detection or not, but all it's going to take is salt water in one of these taillight connections and it's going to potentially take down the, the interior can just like a Ford. I had one of those, I didn't make a video on it though. So passenger door module, driver's door module, that's fairly clean and dry I would think. I don't think this is going to have rear seat comfort control module because it's a work truck or a central vision processing module under the driver's seat. It might have that. I'm not sure what that does. And then it goes across the page back to the page one and it goes to a star connector And we got, well, we don't have power sliding steps, but the HVAC module on the star connector, uh, radio amplifier, screen center stack display, all off of this star can interior high speed connector on the left side of the dash. I'm looking for a place to measure terminating resistance, but I'm also thinking about just crawling under the truck and looking at some tail light connectors to see if they're compromised. Now I did update the software in my Think tool, and the interesting thing is here, I got communication with the right blind spot detection module, and I've got a bunch of network codes. Okay, but the left blind spot detection module, which I'm assuming is the tail light, doesn't communicate. But we do have the right side. That's the DSM, display screen module. I don't even know if it has half this stuff. But if it has the right side, it should have the left side, in my opinion. Comfort seat wheel module. That's probably for a heated steering wheel. Central vision processing. Well, it has that, so it's communicating. 
But the first time I did a network scan with this Think tool, it did not communicate with the HVAC. Now, where's the radio? No radio, seven codes, didn't communicate with the radio. So I'm assuming that this is the interior high speed can, can L it's called here on this and then Secure Gateway is comp complaining about uh, loss of communication with the interior can. But back to this wiring diagram here. There's a lot of potential connectors and this is a Mitchell diagram so some of them may be even left out of this diagram. I'm not too concerned about anything in the cab although that's still up for grabs. This is a work truck so it gets abused or used hard. Left rear of engine compartment. Really? Why would you put a star cam connector in the left rear of the engine compartment? I wonder if we can find that because I can measure terminating resistance at that and see if we see anything. I'm going to see if I can find this. So I chastised Identifix for not having information for a 20 or a 21. Uh, I purchased access for one month to all data do it yourself and it has wiring diagrams and I noticed that the interior high-speed can does go to pin 3 and 11 but from the security uh, secure gateway module so it does show that on the 19 as well so I'm looking for the actual wiring diagrams for the network network wiring diagrams you have the DLC connector. So you usually have them listed under computer data lines, but it might be under body. I'll look around. So I found it under information bus. Can interior high speed bus system. Let's see. Oh my gosh, look at this diagram. Well, let's open, let's zoom it up. Yes, this prints like crap, but this is an OE diagram. So let's see, we have pin 3 and 11 at the diagnostic connector go to the interior can. 3 and 11, I got a breakout box in there. And then from the secure gateway module, this is what I was looking for, this diagram. Plus the location of these gate uh, connectors. Let's zoom this up a bit. Identifix didn't have the location of these star connectors. Interior high speed IP and this is another interior high-speed body. So I'm going to see if I can find these connections. I don't think there's much point printing this diagram because I don't think it's going to print very legibly because it's so so big. But definitely I, all data has the information that Identifix doesn't. So as you can see the dash is dead, the heater controls are blinking on and off, maybe because I don't have the key on, no it's on, let's see if the door shirt works, no nope, the window doesn't work either side, now I got the breakout box installed on uh, the DLC and I'm on pin 3 and 11 which is the interior can and it doesn't communicate unless I actually ask it to communicate and you can see there's network communication going on it doesn't look very good let's try and freeze it 
when I try communicating. So now we don't have communication with the right blind spot detection module. So I'm assuming that this should look like a can C, but regardless, both both of them should be the same. And you can see that there's they're both biased at about 1.8 volts, but they don't look the same. I'm still trying to find those uh, star star connectors. I got component views, but there's individual connectors connected to the star connectors. I looked under the hood and I didn't see it, but it's very uh, congested. So if you pop the headlight switch bezel assembly out, you can see that green, that's the star connector there. So if we can figure out which one goes to the front connector under the hood someplace, I would imagine that's got to be pretty protected. But. Uh, I had a difficult time finding this location. I got pictures of all those connectors, which are all the same. They're different colored wires, so that's useful. Let's look at the wiring diagram again. So at that interior high-speed CAN IP star connector, connector C1, which has three wires on it. It's white and orange, white and gray, and a black wire. I would imagine it's in you know, one of the corners. That would be logical if it's connector one. It's a three-wire connector, and it looks like there's only one three-wire connector. Yeah. So theoretically, if I unplug that connector, that will take that'll divide the network and take the second connector offline which would eliminate the memory seat module, the central vision processing module, the left tail light or right tail light, driver's door, passenger door, body, body control module as well though left tail light but like it should still have communication with the heater controls and the radio because they're off this one display center stack which is dead right now so I'm going to locate this connector one and disconnect it the service the guys have a, a special connector that plugs into this star connector. I'm going to have to acquire one to do testing because it's a little bit difficult to back pin in there. But I'm going to disconnect C1 if I can locate it. So as you can see the center display is dead. Let's turn the key on. The radio display is blacked out. The uh, heater controls are flashing on and off. Blind spot alert unavailable message on the dash. So this connector at the very bottom here, this one right here has the three wires in it. If I can figure out how to get that unplugged. I need two hands. So it turns out there's two connectors in there and they just clip. If you reach in and push up on them, they just clip in. Now there's a little release tab you're supposed to push in on the back, but they're going to snap on with these clips anyways. But this one connector here in the bottom, I couldn't figure out how to unplug it. You got to get a, a pick tool in there. But now that I got connector off. I'm going to back pin this and see what kind of network activity we have here. Connected to the CAN-H and CAN-L and I've got a horrible looking pattern and I'm going to unplug this connector at the bottom here. 
So there's a little release tab there. Unplug this connector, which goes to the second CAN connector, and look at the communication we have now. Now the instrument cluster or the radio is still offline, but that's possible because Let's turn the key off, back on again. One. But definitely we got a perfect looking CAN bus signal and two and a half volts. So the network is compromised from here down. So I'm gonna look at that schematic again. So I've unplugged this connector at the instrument panel star can. So now we need to find this star can. And it says body. And in the Mitchell diagram it says that's under the, in the left side of the engine compartment. I can't see them putting a connector that looks like that one that's under the dash in the engine compartment, but anything's possible. So I have to see if I can find this connector. So I found another star connector underneath the right side of the dash, tucked way up beside the heater housing. And I think that's the body one. I can't see them putting something like that under the hood now. I'm assuming that's connector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm going to double check the wiring on this. I wish I could print these frickin' diagrams. They're so big that when you try to print them, they can't read them. I'm going to check the wiring on here. Well, that doesn't appear to be the correct connector. Because the three-wire plug-in connector 1 is the wrong color. It should be white-orange and white-gray. And I plugged the connector in on the other side and the network went for a shit and I unplugged this connector which should theoretically take this offline and it didn't. And I don't see the other connectors here. So let's see one, two, three, four. Oh brother. Yeah, this is the one I need here. Where the hell is the connector star can IHS body? I can't find it by a keyword search. I talked to a Chrysler tech and he said it's got to be in the cab because, and I make, it makes sense. Uh, it wouldn't be under the hood because it would be exposed to the elements. That would be pure hell. So it's got to be in the cab, but where in the cab? According to the Mitchell information, that connector is in the left rear of the engine compartment. Yeah, for sure. I can't see them putting that in the yet it's called a body connector, left rear of engine compartment. So I went back to Identifix and I deed the vehicle as a 2018 2500 Laramie and I did a keyword search for star can interior high speed I, uh, body with a mega cab and that's where it shows it. That's pretty vague. I like this hologram picture. Standard crew cab. Let's try this one. I can't see them putting that under the hood unless it's inside a case of some kind. It's got to be protected from the elements. Come on, load already. Same picture. Where is that, Chrysler? Is that in the cab or under the under the hood? So under the driver's side of the dash, behind the A-pillar panel, there is another star connector. Let's see if we can pop this one out of here. I think that might be the one in question. So that's what the connector, the network looks like with this one unplugged. So now we got to figure out which one goes to the freaking tail lights. I bet you it's one of those tail lights, and I think the the left tail light was offline. So we're going to disconnect that one first. So apparently that connector goes. That's uh, 
left tail light white no it doesn't that's not the right one but I unplugged that one and the network looks good again well semi good let's see if we got communication so I'm doing a network scan with that connector unplugged that's location 10 if they're numbered from 1 to 10 in a logical manner so I'll pick up when this network scan is done actually the network activity doesn't look that great Let's see if the radio heater controls are working radios back on and the heater controls are working but there's some ugliness to that pattern isn't there Well, I'll see if I can figure out what connector that is. So I plugged that connector back in. And there was no change. The network looks clean now. I got the second last connector unplugged, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's plug it in and see what happens. And these are tiny connectors. Look at how it goes stupid when I plug it in. So I'm going to unplug it again. There it's unplugged. So that is blue and white and white. Let's figure out what that goes to. So according to this schematic, connector 9, assuming that they're logically numbered, is blue, dark blue, and white and orange. And the wires that I've got are blue and white and white. Blue and white and white goes to a module for the memory seat, which I'm sure this doesn't have. It's got mechanical and manual seats by the looks of it. I'm not even sure it's got these... Uh, tail lamp assembly or blind spot detection modules because they're in connectors 10 and 11 yet I had communication with something well I'm gonna have to check see if this makes sense well, that's definitely dark blue with a white tracer and white and dark blue with a white tracer and white is a left tail light. I still got operation of the, the doors, windows. Let's see if we got communication with the left blind spot detection module. Oh, that's the one I disconnected. Let's try the right blind spot detection module. Should have communication with that. Yes, we do. All right, so it's in the left circuit. The network wiring looks good now with that unplugged but that doesn't really help me much. I've come to realize that these connectors are numbered, but they're not in the appropriate location. They can be put in any location other than connector one, which has three terminals because it has a ground wire. So there are four connections, one, two, three, four, on the way to the left tail light assembly, including the tail light assembly. I looked at it briefly now the wiring harness behind the left rear tire I looked at from underneath the vehicle is very poorly designed in my opinion. I'm going to plug that back in and manipulate the harness and see what happens to the network wire, network signal. So you can see the network activity is compromised now with that connector plugged back in. 
Let's have a look underneath the, the back left corner of the vehicle, probably the worst environment there is. Look at this connector here. Right behind the right left rear tire, directly in the side line of fit, just full of mud. Couldn't have tucked that up any higher. Yeah. Now I'm gonna see if one of those connectors is one of the ones in that line. It's still acting up. So there are four connectors in the circuit. One right at the tail light. I've got it disconnected. And the network activity still looks like it's compromised. It's better. But I think that's because why do we need network wiring for the tail lights? Now there's another connector down underneath there. I'm going to get underneath there and unplug it. So this connector is not one of them. I thought it was. There was no component locations on the all data information and I went back to that 2018 vehicle and it doesn't have this connector so this is not the connector I took it apart look at the sand that came out so this little sub harness is not a problem I still got compromised activity on the, the network I'm starting to lean towards just unplugging that one wire from the star connector until I can get some more information so there's the network with that uh, connector to the left blind spot module disconnected at the splice pack down here I'm gonna leave it disconnected till I can get some more information and uh, update my uh, Fiat Chrysler secure gateway access because I can't clear the codes I can read the codes but I can't clear them I've got uh, a Think Tool, but I guess Think Tool and uh, Fiat Chrysler haven't come to an agreement yet, from what I understand. Because it won't let me add that tool. And my Snap on Scan tool is outdated, so it won't let me do it because of, I haven't got a uh, updated software on my Snap on Scan tool. But I'm going to give it back to them like this. Uh, everything is working now. As far as I can tell, oh, it's not, the key is not on. Yeah, the heater controls are working. Passenger window works. Driver's window works. The only thing that's going to be affected is the blind spot detection for something in the lane beside you on the left side. So it turns out my version of Windows 7 on my Snap-on tablet didn't support the right JavaScript for the secure gateway. And then I also had the wrong username. Oh well. So it looks like we're going to be able to clear the codes out of this thing now. Smart scan. I'd like to let it leave with a lot less red red tick marks. Pick up when it gets to the end of this network scan. Okay, so it's at the network scan, so you can see the left blind spot module didn't communicate. I'm gonna clear the DTCs now. Key on engine off. Should be able to clear them now that we have access to Secure Gateway. And there are going to be some reported loss of communication probably once we start this thing. I haven't seen the dash act up since I disconnected that connector under the by the parking brake pedal.
we still got a code in the driver's door module. Oh, probably because of loss of communication. Why didn't these ones clear? Let's see what we got. Read fault code device not network. Please check your network and retry. Hmm. Interesting. So we got a code in the driver's door module and the passenger door module. Let's see what they are. Read fault codes. Lost communication with blind spot detection module. As I suspected. And let's, the driver's door module will have the same thing. Lost communication with blind spot module. But we're able to clear all the codes out of it with the exception of those two codes. So at least when I get it back, if he brings it back for me to explore this further, I'm sure there's some compromised wires underneath the cab somewhere. But for now, we're going to call that one a wrap. This has been fun.